every person in this room is going to retire in the matrix. There's no punchline, it's really coming. And this is not gonna be the scary dystopian matrix like the movies. No, this next revolution in technology is gonna take us to a new reality, a virtual reality. And as we move towards this new reality, it might sound a little bit scary to some, but I'm here to set your minds at ease because VR is not going to isolate us. Rather, it's going to increase human connection more than any technology since the telephone because virtual reality will democratize experience. To understand what I mean, everyone in the room just think back to your greatest dream you've ever had. Think back, warm in your bed, soft pillow, your brain telling stories about floating chairs. <laughs> now, what did you do in that dream? Who did you spend time with? And most importantly, how did it make you feel? If it engaged your senses and made you an active participant in the dream, would you call it an amazing experience? Now, what's an experience that you're not proud of? Maybe that you'd like to do over. If you could go back, if you could relive the experience, identifying the flaws and perfecting your practice, would you inevitably succeed? Beyond that, let's look in the future. What are you going to do when you can experience connection with any person on the planet, regardless of language or location? Because those dreams are common to all humanity. We believe in, we chase after, and we dream of better opportunities and experiences. That pursuit led our ancestors to venture out across the plains, the mountains, the oceans. It's an unstoppable human desire to acquire new experiences. So what do we mean by democratize experiences? Well, humans have always exploited the technologies of their day to make new experiences possible. The ancestors of ours who created fire, who controlled that, democratized the experience of cooking. Inventions like writing, the printing press, and bound books all democratized our access to ideas. The telephone democratized long-distance communication, enabling you to connect with others by voice across great distances. And the internet democratized access to information and funny cat pictures. So we have it all now. Each groundbreaking technology brought a new world of changes and a new range of human experiences. The difference with VR is that the experiences are not limited by distance, nor to your voice. Rather, it immerses you in any world that you choose and lets you participate in the journey. So for example, when you watch your favorite ball game on TV, you don't say you experienced it, or, well, not like that guy, because you observed it, but you didn't really participate. But in VR, every person in this room will be able to experience the game not just from any seat in the stadium, but as your favorite player. Modern sports teams are already using VR to let the players practice off of the field. Soon, that's gonna be you. You will experience playing with and against your favorite athletes in the Super Bowl. Fantasy football will take on an entirely new meaning. So what if you're into music like me? Do you remember the last concert you went to with friends? Right, the problems start almost immediately. Convenience fees, traffic, parking. But would you go to see more music if you got to skip all of that? Because in VR, you can experience the roar of the crowd, the intimacy of a small club, and the most massive stadium while playing along with the band. And let's be clear, I'm not saying this is gonna replace one or the other. I believe it'll be both and. Radio, CDs, online video, that didn't eliminate live events. It made them even more special. And the fact is most of us could never experience playing in a Super Bowl or sharing a stage with Paul McCartney. But you will, you can. So how about video calls? They're pretty cool. They're amazing, kind of, when they work. We get a <laughs> mixed results. The challenges of live video mean that they're often more of a hassle. Is my hair okay? Is the light good? Am I wearing pants? You know, I mean, it's, there's a challenge. In VR though, there's no need for good lighting. I always look this good. And while right now the avatars are a little cartoonish, honestly, how many years are we away from human likeness? Not far. 
And the sense of presence is unlike any other technology. For example, recently I found myself in the uh, International Space Station, as you do, um, and the soft glow of planet Earth below, and reflecting on Carl Sagan's pale blue dot. In that moment, I reached out and I high-fived my son from across the country. And that's an experience I'll never forget. Because no VR is ever going to replace a hug from my son, but we're creating real memories. We're having real experiences, visual, audible, tactile memories together, even when we're not. So can you. You will have real experiences with the people that you love from anywhere on Earth, because VR will democratize experience. And I know you've heard all this promise before, right? For decades, we've seen VR trying desperately to catch up, <laughs> OK? But uh, we're not quite there yet. And while it started with the idea of what they called an ultimate display, it engaged some pretty scary technology. Technology that uh, required for a long time either giant computers, special projection rooms, or full-on science fiction to operate. And as time went on, it didn't get a, a whole lot better. We've, we've had it rough for a while. And then this happened. Well, not that specifically. Smartphones. The explosion of supercomputers in our pockets connected us in ways we had never even imagined. They created billion-dollar businesses built on new experiences. And then one day, a kid named Lucky literally built a working VR headset out of duct tape and a smartphone. And next thing you know, Facebook bought it for $2 billion. Because it's the next logical evolution of the technology that will democratize experience. So today's VR experiences range from the cheapest cardboard all the way up to room scale experiences that will engage your body and blow your mind. And if this is where we are now, where are we going? So how's VR going to revolutionize your day-to-day -day experiences? And most importantly, are you going to have to wear this thing on your head? No. Firstly, no. You will not. You'll get to. Congratulations. Right, but no, as we move past this, actually, uh, it won't just go on your head or over your eyes. In fact, most of your first experiences with virtual reality is going to be through your smartphone. So you see, virtual reality can be described on a spectrum, from a minor augmenting of reality through your smartphone camera to a total replacement of what you experience in modern VR. And the amazing thing about augmented reality is that even though it's not as immersive, it does let you participate with the experience by letting you control the layers of reality. So for example, we already know apps like Snapchat, Facebook, they have cameras that let you augment your appearance, whatever that's worth. And then, of course, you've got apps like Pokemon Go that brought millions of people not more isolated, but out into the streets, exploring their cities together as the software overlaid these virtual characters on the physical world. And now you can. Psh, Wild new experiences are on the way. You can try out new looks before you buy. Spend your afternoon fighting zombies in your front yard. <laughs> Augmented reality is going to enable all sorts of participation with these new layers of reality. And for those of us allergic to pets, a virtual companion can accompany you throughout your day. And she can interact with Alexa for you as well. It won't replace reality, but it will make new experiences available for all. And that's what intrigues us, because we're human, we're adventurers, and we're hardwired to seek out new experience. Because the brands know that we don't buy brands, we don't buy phones. Humans buy the experiences that the technology provides. And virtual reality will democratize experience. On the other end of the VR spectrum, we now have full VR systems to bring your sight, your hearing, and touch into the metaverse. So how will it democratize your experience? Well, let's go back to that dream you had. What if you were able to recreate that dream? What if you were able to wave a magic wand and create any storyline that you can imagine? And not only create it, but you and anyone else can live it. You can experience it. If you dreamed of traveling, you can go soaring across the globe in Google Earth VR. Right now, you can see the world from a God's eye view and experience cities, nature, and vistas, and then fly down and land outside your childhood home. If you dreamed of becoming a superhero, a space adventurer, or a race car driver, 
You can experience the roar of the engines and the thrill of every turn. Your dreams are brought to life through this magic of virtual reality. If you've ever dreamed of exploration, you can travel to a sunken ship without ever getting wet and reach out and touch the schools of jellyfish as you experience something our ancestors could have never dreamed about. Just watch out for the sharks. <laughs> the difference between your dreams and perceivable reality is going to diminish into insignificance once VR makes any experience available for anyone. And while the current quality of experiences ranges from, wow, that's pretty cool, to, whoa, I didn't know they could do that yet, over the next few years, you're going to see dramatic increases in quality, we're going to lose this wire, and over the next 10 years, you can ask yourself, when you can experience anything, what will you do first? So let's acknowledge the fears, though. What about addiction? What about fringe cases? If virtual reality is really that good, won't we all end up like Wally? <laughs> Just floating around with our headsets and our giant sodas? Uh, yeah, is that what we mean by experience? Ideally not. Unfortunately, the problem isn't new. Every new technology brings this. Many people are addicted to games, TV, social media, and oftentimes those addictions are fueled by a lack of connection to other humans. But the difference now is that VR is social we can actually create entirely new avenues to increase human connection. It enables experiences that let you travel the world with your friends, engage in magical battles, or create amazing works of art all together in VR. Over the next few years, similar to the explosion of telecommuting since the 90s, teleporting will become second nature. Millions of friends will hang out just for a quick movie without having to deal with traffic and millions of workers will collaborate with the best and brightest from anywhere in the world. Even better, not only will I be in the same room with you or perceive that, you'll perceive the space in the way that you want. I'll see a mountain lodge and you'll see a beach. And imagine the possibilities when you never have to sit through someone else's terrible PowerPoint again. <laughs> Beyond meetings, classrooms are gonna become experience rooms. Today, students learn astronomy from a book, but tomorrow your group homework will be creating your own functioning solar system. Today, practicing medical procedures is difficult and expensive. Tomorrow, you and your med school friends will practice 10 times as much for one-tenth of the cost in VR. Now, of course, it won't replace everything. <laughs> it's not meant to. I'd like my doctor to practice on a real human every once in a while. But, in our virtually augmented future. You, me, we are gonna be able to choose our layers of reality. And just like the internet and smartphones, we'll either use technology or be used by our technology. And just like every democracy, you'll make your own choice. Not long ago, people said they'd never date online. And now 40 million Americans connect with others through the internet. Not long ago, People said they'd never get their news online. And now most of us get our news on Facebook from Russia. <laughs> Not long ago, your grandmother said she could never use email, and now it's estimated that 100% of all email hoaxes are sent by the elderly. <laughs> but in the very near future, you'll look up from your chair and see that grandma's calling. And with a wave, you'll appear together, side by side, just like just like me and my son, enjoying the pleasure of her company and the experience of presence. Because people don't want technology. They want connection. They want experiences, and virtual reality will democratize experiences. So, rather than be afraid of what's coming, what if we choose right now to do it different this time, to build something great that increases human connection? What if we choose, like the millions before us, to use this technology to advance all of us? Our education, our communication, socialization, our civilization. If we combine VR with new technologies, like automatic language translation, it will enable us to communicate with any friend, any customer, any relative, anywhere. To combine VR with artificial intelligence, things like self-driving cars, dreams will become a reality. And not just for you and I, but for everyone. 
will have the ability to create a new reality for even the least of us to benefit from the totality of the human experience. We've seen how, with every new technology, there are those of us who react in fear and those who seize opportunity. We are humans. We come from a long line of adventurers who dared to bravely invent the future. It's not a time that's coming, it's a reality that we will create. We're the first species to be able to choose, to learn from, to live in, and indeed the first to democratize our experiences. What are you gonna create first? Thank you.